Hey everyone, welcome to Pai's Kitchen, my second show on YouTube where I share with you delicious recipes outside of Thai cuisine. Now, as many of you know, I've got an Argentinian co-host on the TV show One World Kitchen, Natalia Machado. Now, she gave me this recipe, so I've got an Argentinian treat for you today. It's a hot, chewy cheese bread recipe called chipa. Now, I know this recipe is going to be good because Natalia is a chopped champion and a sweet genius champion, and she's got her own restaurant in Montreal. She's amazing. So I can't wait to share this with you. It is gluten-free, delicious, super easy, and so addictive. Let's get started. So the choice of cheese is flexible to a certain extent. So I'm going to show you what Natalia uses at her restaurant, which by the way is called L'Atelier d'Argentine in Montreal. If you're in the city, go check it out. So she uses Parmigiano Reggiano, which is a type of Parmesan cheese, and Fontina. So if you cannot find these types where you live, you can use other cheeses. Just keep in mind the overall moisture content of everything. So I've got a cheese that's quite dry and another one that's quite moist. So this is soft. Softer than a cheddar. So don't choose, you know, too dry cheeses, for example. And because I'm using a pretty coarse grater, I'm not pressing it as hard so I don't get huge chunks because small, thinner pieces will mix a little bit better. And then the same thing for the Fontina. I love Fontina. It's so creamy. It's sort of medium mild, so not too strong. And by the way, because this cheese is quite soft. If it's very cold, it'll be easier to grate. So I should have pulled this out the last minute, but that's okay. So chipa are like hot, cheesy mochi. Mmm, so good. And the secret to the chewiness is tapioca starch. Okay, so tapioca starch. I use tapioca starch in Thai cuisine all the time. Comes in a bag like this. But I've never baked with them, which is why I was so interested when I found out about this recipe. And tapioca is what makes the pearls in bubble tea. So think chewiness, like the bubble tea pearls. Most Asian grocery stores will carry tapioca starch. Latin American stores will as well. Health food stores like Whole Foods will too, but they will be more expensive. So go to the Asian grocery store first. Now I am only making a half recipe because I've got a ton of these at home. So when you make it, you'll get more than this, okay? So I'm gonna just mix in the cheese. And this is so easy. It's literally a dump and stir recipe. Lots of cheese. And I like to just toss it together first just to get the cheese distributed. Just a little bit of salt. The cheese is already quite salty, but this recipe needs a little bit. If you're using different kinds of cheese though, the amount of salt might be different depending on the saltiness of your cheese. So the first one might be a bit of a test run for you. Okay, so now the liquid ingredients. I've got some milk here. Now, orange juice. Now, this is going to be just a hint of orange. So if you don't like orange flavor, it's not going to be like, you know, orange in your face. And egg. This is just half an egg because I'm doing a half recipe. And by the way, there are sort of a similar bread in Brazil, in Paraguay, and probably in other Latin American countries. So if you've got something similar in your country, definitely tell me about it. I would love to know. And now I'm just going to knead it just with my hands. If you're doing a big batch and you have a KitchenAid mixer, you can just throw it in the mixer and let it do the work for you. But for this much, I just find my hands do just fine. Okay, so once it's sort of smooth, I'm gonna take it out and put it on my cutting board. And by the way, because this doesn't have any wheat flour, there's no gluten, which means you can knead to your heart's content and you don't have to worry about overdeveloping gluten, making it chewy or tough. It's very forgiving. Okay, so I'm gonna just cut this into two, just so it's more manageable. I'm gonna roll this into a lock. So this is quite heavy. So. You don't want to make big ones. So they're like little cheese puffs, sort of. And now I'm going to cut these. And that's it. Like they're ready to be baked. Isn't that amazing how fast that was? Crazy. All right. So just a word of warning about these. They are only good when they're warm and gooey inside. Once they, they're cold, they stale very quickly, basically. So what I would do is I would make a whole bunch of these and freeze what you're not ready to eat and only bake them up to order. That's what Natalia does at her restaurant. She actually freezes them and bake them directly from the freezer. They'll also last in the fridge for two weeks. 
Okay, this is totally my, my adaptation. Because I'm doing a half recipe and I have a half an egg left, I'm just gonna use it as egg wash because otherwise I'll just throw it away. And they'll create a bit of a shiny surface. But if you don't, totally fine. So I did say these are best served hot, but don't burn yourself, let them cool a little bit. So I've let these cool for a few minutes so it's safe. They've turned a nice golden brown at the bottom and because there's no sugar in these really, they won't brown too, too much. So you know they're done when you start to see the cheese spots appear on top. And they will spread a little bit as you can see, so you know, leave lots of room. Now, which one is gonna be my favorite? Smells so cheesy. Mm. If you think about the chewy texture of mochi, a little firmer, a little bouncier, and extra super cheesiness buried itself in there, crusty and crunchy on the outside. I see a lot of cheap recipes with baking powder, but Natalia said she doesn't like to put baking powder in them because she wants to make them extra gooey, and extra gooey is definitely what these are so good. So the recipe will be on hataikitchen.com, and when you make it, send me a photo on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. And if in your country you've got a version of these little guys, tell me about it. I'd love to know. Share your recipe, and I will see you next time for your next delicious adventure. Oh, and thanks Natalia for this awesome recipe. Bye. Let these cool for a few minutes so it's safe. They've golden browned. Oh, I just used that as a word, as a verb. They've golden, golden browned, browned on the outside.